Super Mario Odyssey released on October 27, 2017, and with over 27 million copies sold, it's considered to be one of the greatest video games of all time. But how do we get here? To understand that, we have to go all the way back to 2013. Nintendo EPD, formerly known as Nintendo EAD Tokyo, just finished development on their new game, Super Mario 3D World, for the Wii U. And after the development, the developers were like, you know, this is a fun game and all, but I think it's time that Mario returns to its old roots. I think it's time to create an open, non-linear, 3D Mario game that doesn't just appeal to casual gamers, but also to old and core Mario fans. And thus, only shortly after the release of 3D World, began the development on the game that would later be known as Super Mario Odyssey. Now, from the very beginning, Nintendo was already experimenting with motion controls and with the ability to throw Mario's hat. In fact, already the very first prototype featured a simple version of Cappy, where you could throw Mario's hat around the stage, and the people at Nintendo loved it. In fact, they loved it so much that they decided to make this the game's main mechanic. And obviously, this later evolved to the capture mechanic that we also all know and love. Speaking of capture mechanic, did you know that this thing was found in the game's files? I don't really know what it's supposed to represent, but this unused capture allows you to jump really, really high by, I guess, charging up your head? I mean, this is definitely a weird capture, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. Anyways, there are still one important question the developers were facing. For which console were they even developing? Was it for the 3DS? Or maybe the Wii U? But after the news came around that Nintendo was working on their next gaming console, that obviously being the Nintendo Switch of course, the team knew they had to take advantage of the features the Switch had to offer. And obviously one of the main features that the Switch has to offer is allowing players to seamlessly switch between docked and handheld mode. <laughs> you see what I did there? Switch between docked and handheld? Oh, never mind. Thus, Nintendo designed the game in such a way so that even players who maybe only have, uh, let's say, 5 minutes left to play, maybe because you're on the bus and you have to get out soon, could still make some progress, even if that meant only getting one power moon or only finding three purple coins. In other words, they wanted to satisfy every type of player, the ones who have a lot of time to kill and are willing to follow the game's story, and the ones who don't have a lot of time to kill and just want to progress through the game quickly. I would also say that's why the game is relatively short compared to other 3D Mario games. In addition, there was another thing that the team really, really wanted to incorporate, that being the feeling of surprise. They wanted to surprise the player in every way possible, even if that meant adding realistic humans, realistic dragons, realistic dinosaurs, heck, even realistic rocks. Yay. And that's also why Mario Odyssey is now this place for its innovativity. It, innovate, innovate, wait, does that word even exist? Oh yeah. The developers wanted to show the player something new every minute, to also keep them engaged and intrigued, of course. Now, fast forward a few years, Nintendo releases the first Switch trailer that doesn't just showcase the Nintendo Switch hardware itself, but also some footage of Super Mario Odyssey. And even though this trailer was over one year apart to the game's actual release, there aren't many major differences compared to the final game. Sure, there are some differences, like the Jax design looking different, or these ice formations not making the cut in the final game. Thanks, by the way. But other than that, there isn't much else different compared to the final version. Although, we only did get like 5 seconds of gameplay footage. So let's just fast forward 3 months to when Nintendo finally, finally gave us a fully fledged Mario Odyssey trailer. Fun fact, until this day, this trailer is still the most viewed video on their YouTube channel, standing at a whopping 56 million views. And unlike the previous gameplay footage that we got, this trailer has many more differences that are different compared to the final game. I won't go through every single change of course, but some of these changes include different signs in New Dong City, Peach's face looking well, different, I guess? And Bowser's ship also looking quite different compared to the final version of the game. A few months later, we got once again a new Mario Odyssey trailer. And again, I won't go through every change here as well, but one change that I would like to point out in particular is how this leaderboard sign looks completely different in the final game. It looks more like a toy instead of a high-tech computer thingy. Oh, and these posters are also missing from the final game. Just wanted to point that out too. And after this trailer, fans only had to wait a couple of months until Super Mario Odyssey finally released on October 27th, 2017. And I mean, from there on, there were a couple changes Nintendo made to the game, like adding Balloon World, or adding these Pixel Mario locations that give you lots, lots, and lots of coins. But those changes aren't very significant, and I couldn't really find any information on their development history, so I guess I'll just leave it here for now. Subscribe.